the real deal. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Real Deal Airsoft Part Two of the ASAC Innovation Tapless Cylinder Head Testing. In the first video, we did not get good results, and it was basically a, a drop-in. And we're going to be testing this in a different build with a different setup. If you didn't see video one, definitely go check video one so you can see what build that was. I'm not going to go over that part list. You can check it on that video. In this build, we're going to be working with one of my uh, personal builds. I'll tell you the parts list in a hot minute. Parts list is Max ME Pro hop chamber, real deal 21.1 palm nozzle, real deal DFG tappet plate, real deal cylinder head, real deal piston, real deal bearings, real deal Golden Boy motor, real deal Monk Custom skeletonized receiver set, um, old uh, green cylinder for the Goblin effect. Uh, what else do we got in here? Real deal tappet spring and uh real deal brass in a barrel maple leaf bucking so that's pretty much what's going on here all right it's not integrated hop chamber like the previous video so hopefully we'll find different uh results all right that was a mouthful and it's a dsg all right so the first thing we're going to do is a control test we're going to see what we're working with as our baseline so we're going to be seeing the fps that we're getting out of this build without the tap of the cylinder head so we have something to compare it to before we install this part, I'm gonna take it apart for you guys. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside and I'll give you a recommendation on how to disassemble it. I found a, a very easy and quick way to do it. Um, something else to note is I changed something inside here. In the, compared to the first video, the thing that I did was I swapped out this spring. This is a heavier spring. So there's a softer spring inside as well. I lubricated the O-rings, the internal O-ring. One thing that I'm going to do after this control test, there's gonna be two more tests. So I'm just gonna drop it in and see how it works. That's the first test. And the second test is going to be, I'm gonna take it apart and I'm actually gonna mill holes on the internal nozzle. So first things first, let's get to the control test readings. All right, boys and girls, we're loaded up with 0.25 gram BBs. Let's get it going. As well, another thing to note, I'm not changing any settings on the hop chamber for the Aztec versus the real deal compression bars. I gotta turn the tracer off, hold on. 1 1.28, 1.28, 1.26, 1.27, 1.26, 1.29, 1.27, 1.28. All right, man consistent. Take a look at those numbers real quick. Nice. So we're averaging around 330 FPS with a 0.25 gram BB. That's our baseline. All right, before the installation, I told you guys I'm gonna take it apart and show you what we're working with here. So in order to take it apart, you have to unscrew this back half and it's literally impossible. I was told to do it with my thumb, but it's not gonna happen. Yes, I scratched it up to get more grip, believe it or not. This is the meta. You take a pick, you push it in, that, that, that grips the rim and you're able to turn it. I'm telling you, it'll save you so much time. All right, we have this back cap. All right, this is the cylinder portion and this is the nozzle portion. So let me just put everything out so you can see it. All right, this is what we're working with. Let's get a measurement on the total length on the shaft. How long is your shaft, Aztec? You got that 28.4 length shaft. All right, boy, so initially I swapped out the spring. Over here is a little O-ring thing that creates a seal. And right here is where the holes are. So if I don't get good FTS results, I'm milling these holes bigger or adding more holes to increase airflow. Because there's no airflow out the back it's only out the side. You see what I'm saying? So my theory is if I still don't have good results, I'm milling these holes bigger or adding more holes to increase airflow. There's an M150 spring in this DSG. Let's reassemble this right now, throw it in and get back to the testing. I'll do a reassembly real quick for you guys. Boom, bang, and pow. All right, and also just for uh, an example's sake, people have requested to see 
in the most fully extended state does the nozzle touch the bucking so that's how we'll have it assembled right now temporarily just so when i drop it into the gearbox shell i can observe if it is touching the bucking or not also a quick tech tip for easy disassembly to properly reset your nozzle and have the tap plate not under tension meaning it's not going to pull your sector gear shims off when you open the gearbox shell you want to trip the anti-reverse latch but you don't want to trip it with the main spring inside the replica because the gears might spin backwards and smash into your uh, rack support so what i do is this pretty much i put the spring in like a little bit like so you know, i'll flip it this way this is a little easier for me i'll push a little bit on the spring but not a lot of tension and then i'll go and trip it all right boys let's take a look at the nozzle to bucking relationship before we go with this install i want to confirm that the tip of the nozzle is actually making contact with the bucking so let's take a look at it right now shout out to lemon for asking the question all right inside here you can see the bucking a little bit boom contact we have contact right now the nozzle is grinding up on the bucking lips what did he say and as we make a full seal it actually pushes the nozzle in a little bit so there's definitely going to be contact between the nozzle and the bucking Let's check the FPS results with a quick assembly. All right, boys, we're all installed. Loaded out with 0.25 gram BBs. Let's see how she performs. This is genuine real deal results right here. I did not test it in this configuration yet. Again, 18 to one ratio gear set, M150 spring. All right, I need to connect the battery. Um, that's what you call <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Testing number two was not a success. What we did differently from the first test was swapping out the stock nozzle spring for the softer one, and that didn't bring me any better results. In the third test, I'm going to mill out larger portholes in the nozzle to increase the airflow. Being that the system acts like a solenoid, releasing air from the moment the seal is opened, I'm curious to see how it will perform once we nail down this technology. Shout out to Aztec Innovations for trying to innovate and for setting this part out to the real deal. Hopefully this information can lead to the best final product, but as of right now, real deal compression parts are for the win. I've been using the thicker O-ring lately in my builds. If you're curious about our new Palm 21.1 millimeter nozzle, check out the recommended video. Until next time, see you on the field. Thanks. So please, Okay, thank you. The real deal.